Good morning, friends. It's lovely to be with you this morning. I am going to share with you from uh, the book of Micah, Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to verse 8. Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to verse 8. Listen to the word of God. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, O mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt. I redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you out, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what the Balak, king of Moab, cancelled. And what Balaam, son of Boer, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with a burnt offerings? with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand of rams and ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. May the Lord bless to us the reading of his word now and forever. Amen. Just up to, up to that place in, in Micah 6. Um. Micah was a prophet during during difficult times. I just have a a picture of a, of a situation like what we we are experiencing in the world today, um, very turbulent times. Um, the first chapter of the book of Micah, um, he foretold the coming of Yahweh against Israel. And you will remember that um, most of, of the activities um, during this time, both in what we, we regard as, as the northern and the southern kingdoms, they were quite um, turbulent. They um, were going through um, social um, evil, social degradation that was so prevalent in in Judah. Um, he he was quite open to challenge the rulers, especially if they were working contrary to um, what God envisaged for His people. Uh, Micah was quite outspoken. He was a prophet who um, was quite um, very strong in, in the situation of, of evil and where he experienced social ills. He challenged leaders who, um, who appeared to be hating 
what God was doing, hating good things. Um, challenge them in their love for evil. Um, and, and so he, he stood very strong um, even against people who, um, who had forgotten what God has done. And he, he just wanted to, to bring them along the path. And you could say in, in some ways in, in Micah 6, we, we hear the heart of God. Maybe um, his disappointment and the belonging that his people will come back to him. And, and so here we, we hear that, that heart of God. Um, Michael and some other commentators will say that God had number of complaints against his people. And so M Micah put them before, before God's people so that they can begin to reflect on things that displeases God about their lives. And, and here are some of the things that, that we, we have picked up. Stand up and plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, O mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? What is it that I have done to you? And it can, even it can be put in the other way, is my people, what is it that I have not done for you? Because God has done everything for them. Um, and, and this is what he least. I have brought you up out of Egypt. I redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you. Also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak king of Moab, cancelled, and what Balaam, son of Boa, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. And so here the Lord tabulate things that he had done for the Israelites. Things that he had done to rescue them, to pull them out of the pit, to take them out of slavery, to take them out of suffering, to do good things for them, to set them on the right path of recovery and restoration. You see, God put out that this is what I have done for you so that I, through these processes, I have redeemed you. I have brought you back to me. And I thought that your response will be the response of love, a response of commitment, a response when you give yourself to me, a response when you look at what I have done, the message that I have put into your life, and that your response will be, will be very appropriate to what I have done. You will show love. You will show appreciation. You, you will turn back from, from the path that you have been traveling on and come to the path where I am, where I am leading you, where I am directing you. The Lord was pleading here for uh, people that will be people that will be committed, people who who come back, people who who repent, people who um, open themselves to the embrace of the Lord. And it is quite clear here that God's people had taken 
a different path. And I think a huge reminder and learning to us that we, we are always, God always is calling us to come back home, to come back to Him, to come into His presence, to live lives that glorify Him, lives that will honor Him. That lives that are lived in conjunction with, with his precepts. Good lives that bring glory to God. And here in Micah, we, we hear that also. Um, because after God has put all these things that he has done, for his people. There is a realization that there need to be a response from us. You know, God cannot do things for you. God cannot hold you by hand. And you don't respond appropriately. You don't show him honor and glory you don't respond with love and giving yourself. You don't show commitment, mercy and grace to all things that God is doing for you. And so here is the question that, I put, that is put. With what shall I come before the Lord? What is it that I bring before the Lord? And bow down before the exalted God. It's the consciousness always that God always is exalted. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? With calves? A year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousands of rivers of oil? Will these things please God? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Just listen to that the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. And he has listed these things. Are these things things that will make God happy? Because sometimes we, we, we think that is how we respond to the love of God. We give. We give even when things, the motives are not, are not right. We, we tend to masquerade the serious um, lack of deep commitment and transformation of the heart and mind that put us in the space where God operates. And so Micah says, those are not the things. He says, he has showed you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? He says, all these things are good. They, they can be. But the Lord is, is requiring much more than that from us. And he says, and what does the Lord require of you? And he lists the three things. He says is to, is to act justly and to love mercy 
and to walk humbly with your God. Those are three things. To act the justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord. And when you, when you come to think of these things, they, they embrace who God is. Because he's the God of justice. He's the God who, who loves justice. He's the God who, who treats us as his people justly. He is the Lord who expects that we, we will be the same. That our character will, will tend to resemble the Lord that we follow. That we will be people who love justice. We, in our relationships, in our dealings, in our walk, we will act justly. You know, we will not have any um, spirit of oppression, oppressing and trampling others, disregarding their rights, um, undermining the image of God that is in them, not honoring them as people of God, as people created in the image of God, as people who, who are like us, who merit anything that we will expect to come to us. If we, we are in positions of power over others, we, we adopt that attitude of justice. We, we are known as people who adhere and who keep to just the things. So it's that we act justly, that our ways are always just. And then we love mercy. That our love, mercy, tends to, to draw us to herself. That this is what we show. Wherever we are, we we people who are merciful. Because there, there are huge dividends for us being merciful. So when when you have gone through the mental transformation and God has taken residence in your life that what fills your life when you see others your you you tend to be drawn to how God will look at others and deal with them in their particular situation. You are full of compassion. Your heart is with others. You can tread where, where they have walked. You can fit yourself into their shoes. And you look at them with the eyes of Jesus. And you help them with the heart of Jesus. And the fourth thing, the, the third thing that he says here is that we walk humbly um, with, with the Lord. It's it's life of humility. So, so we, we have a very good 
um, when we look at ourselves, when we look at our attitude, uh, the way we, we, we relate to God who is our Savior, we have taken the path of humility. We, we are humble before God because we have learned from Jesus. Jesus has taught us humility. You remember in Philippians chapter 2, he put it, he put it so beautifully. He says, um, well, let me just share with you a few verses of, of uh, Philippians chapter 2. He says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others more than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as men, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Beautiful. And Jesus has modeled for us what it means to walk humbly with the Lord. And friends, my, my prayer is that your life will embrace these three requirements that God has put before us. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord. Let him allow your light to shine in the world for his glory and for his honor. Amen. Let us pray. Father, a very huge expectation that you, you have of us in terms of the life that you want us to live. It's the life that pleases you, the life that brings glory to you, Life that they bring glory to your name. Life that, that honor you. Micah help us to understand this, this life because he, he put aside all the material goods that we might think that that is what you want from us. And it is not all the accomplishments, all the, the giving that we have. Because whatever we have, whatever we have seen comes from you. We have received it from you. And so, Lord, thank you that, that this is not what you expect from us. Thank you that we... I expected to give more than that. And the very simple things of life, 
things that demonstrate how we have moved and how we have been transformed. Thank you, Father, that it is a life of giving ourselves to you. Giving ourselves to the values of the kingdom. Seeing ourselves more in the light of being uh, the people of the kingdom. Thank you, Father, that it is acting and taking the course of justice and stand and being people who stand for what is right, for what is just. And not only for myself, but if something has to be just for me, it has to be just for another, for the next person. So I understand that it is not to act justly for as far as things concerns me. That I should be passionate in my life for the cause of justice. So where, wherever there is oppression and people are treated unjustly, you expect us to stand on the side of those who are being oppressed and not treated justly. So Father, we pray that justice will be the very foundation of our lives. You also want us to love mercy. And because you are merciful, you, you look at people, you look at their situations, and always your response in those situations is that you you are merciful. Your heart goes to those who are suffering, to those who are excluded. Your heart, Father, goes to um, children and women who are abused, people whose rights are, are, are being undermined, to the workers who um, feel a sense of oppression and exclusion in the work environment. Maybe even not earning enough or being exploited in those situations and environments. Father, you, you love us to walk humbly with you. A life of humility. Where we understand that you had first loved us and that you have first reached out to us. And so Lord, we, we thank you for that. We celebrate that. We glorify you for that. And so we continue to long that through our lives we will live for you. Our lives will bring glory to you. It will be lives that honor you. Lives that um, walk hand in hand with you heart to heart, a life where we, we are growing in, in our humility because we, we understand who we are before the throne of God. 
And so in, in humility, we, we also um, take from you what life of humility is because we, we then walk in humility with our fellow men so that our lives will continually uh, elevate elevate the reasons that you your supremacy will be understood and honored in this life so father we we think at this time of the world we we think of the world in its brokenness uh, places in the world where um things are, are just gone out of hand um, because of these things, of lack of justice, lack of mercy, and lack of humility. We think of places where the, the war is taking its toll on the lives of civilians. We think of places where they they there is no peace and father we can think of ukraine we can think of of palestine there are so many parts of the world where there is lack of shalom and so father we think of people who are sick people who just need to experience your touch People, Father, that are in our hearts and our minds as we come into this call. So, um, people that you have in mind, please, in, your, in the silence of your heart, just mention their names before God. And, Father, we pray for their healing. We pray for their restoration. We pray that your love will fill them uh, in a very deep way. We also pray for your church. Your church as it plays uh, that role of what is expected of us a church that is just a church that is merciful a church that is humble and because of of these qualities it draws others to you and further just help them to get the story of the gospel the good news for this world and so father in this coming week we just very conscious that we go with you and we ask that you will go with us and that you will bless whatever we do the ministries that we carry out as the church of jesus christ people that we have put in the leadership and so lord we will lift them before your soul with joy and with thanksgiving Pray this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Dear friends, I am so, so grateful that you have been able to join us and being part of this call. I, I pray that God will, will just bless you, um, that God will, will embrace you in a very deep way, that, that his warmth will fill you and it will be what uh, encourages you um, to to look at life to look at his mess and what he has done and that your response will just be to embrace in your life justice mercy and humility may the lord bless you have a blessed blessed week friends thank you Amen.